Hey, Peter, it's very good to see you. We have a really important question for a lot of people today. What does the Fed's rate hike mean for you? As you know, after months of anticipation, the Fed is finally raising rates. That means we could be paying less for gas and groceries, I hope, but more for our mortgage, credit cards, or car loan. It's not all bad news. We're going to break it down. But first, Peter, what's the big takeaway for the average person? Well, this isn't just a one-time thing. The Fed's language has been that they plan to aggressively raise <laughs> right. interest rates, maybe six more times in 2022, and then several subsequent uh, interest rate hikes in 2023. The last time the Fed tried to raise interest rates, we saw a pretty deep decline in the market at the end of 2018. And really, I think a lot of the volatility that we saw at the beginning of 2022 was the uh, knowledge that the Fed intended to begin raising rates again. So the market had some pressures on it as a result of, of just the information put out there that the Fed's direction was was being signaled. And so the market really kind of reacted to that right. more so than, than even the rate hike itself, it seems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one question I want to ask, because I feel like there were a lot of people who really wanted to buy a home last year or refinance. Some people were lucky enough they got a home, some didn't. But the reason I'm asking, Peter, if we take a look at the 30-year fixed rate now on mortgages, right now, 467. And it's only, like you said, probably going to creep up more as those interest rates keep going up. So if I was thinking of buying or refinancing, is this something I should be doing like now? Yeah, I think, you know, better better now than later if you're looking to finance and are going to need to borrow capital. As far as like from a consumer perspective, yeah, what this rate hike and intended continued rate hikes mean are that borrowing money is going to be more expensive right. the last into the rest of 2022 and, and years forward. Also, people were moving up to larger and larger homes because they right. could afford those larger homes for essentially the same payment because of the lower interest rates. We're probably going to see that slow down as well. But if you're looking to buy, if you're needing to finance that and borrow money, it probably means that now is as good a time as any to get into that process and, and lock in the these low interest rates for as as long as you can, really. I mean, I like being paid out of debt. I don't love having debt, but if you can lock into these historically low interest rates for as long a period of time, you're probably going to be able to afford a, a lower payment. And to put some perspective on this, Aaron, is like, yes, the rates are slightly higher than they maybe were six months ago or a year ago, but right. these rates still are very historically attractive. Historically low. Right, right, right. It's just, it feels painful, <laughs> but yeah. you're right. Historically, not so bad. So the other thing I wanted to ask about home equity line of credits, so you're talking about refinancing being popular. There was an 83% increase in demand for home equity line of credits. So if I have a HELOC, how's this going to affect me? Well, the variable rates, you may need to watch out for those because yeah. what you had as a low rate uh, last year in a couple years, if, if you continue just those minimum payments, it could adjust. If you've got a variable rate, you need to definitely pay attention to that. I think a lot of the increase in volume of HELOCs, though, was due to a lot of marketing. I mean, I heard the radio commercials almost every day saying you could consolidate other debt. You could put new additions on your home. You could buy that kitchen or that, that uh, swimming pool that you had always dreamed of. Or you could even eliminate debt by borrowing more money from your home. It didn't make much sense <laughs> to me. That's not right. how I look at eliminating debt by going out and borrowing more. Right. But again, as compared to a lot of other rates, like credit card rates, which are usually in, in the double digits, they're right. not very attractive. If you could borrow money at a low rate, put it on your home, uh, it did seem like a much better deal. But I, I imagine that we will see this slowing down pretty substantially as well as those rates do begin to creep up. Okay. So the way that I'm hearing you explain this, it's not great news if you have debt, but it could potentially be good news if you are a saver or an investor. Why is that? Well, specifically a saver. I mean, the interest rate that we will get on deposits to banks, mm -hmm. checking savings, money market, those should slightly improve. In the grand scheme of things, is money in the bank keeping up with inflation? No, probably not. And the rates that we're making on savings will probably lag behind the increase in the Federal Reserve's stated interest rate. They, they probably won't creep up 
quite as quickly. But we should, over time, begin to see better rates on savings, on deposits, where we are saving money. But there is a difference between saving and investing. Investing involves risk. And the bond market is actually much larger than the stock market. We hear a lot about the stock market because it's more exciting. It moves. It drives headlines. Right. But the bond market is where people institutions have loaned money for a stated interest rate over a given period of time to entities that need that money. Municipalities, governments, um, there are, are bond issuers, corporations that want to raise capital. And what they do is they borrow that money from investors. Well, when you make that loan as an investor, you lock into an interest rate for a period of time. If interest rates during that period of time begin to creep up and you want your money back, then you may have to sell your bond holding your loan at a lower cost, at a, a, a lower premium than what it had been valued at previously. If, if I have a 4% bond and interest rates are now five, in order to make that attractive to a buyer, I have to lower my price to give them an equivalent yield. Now, right. that's a, a lot to say that interest rates and bond values tend to move in opposite directions. So as we see rising interest rates, it may be that we could go out and buy new bonds for a better yield and get a better rate, but the value of existing bonds and bond funds could suffer. Historically, it has been known that when interest rates rise, bond values and bond fund values fall. And the problem there is that's what is typically used for the more conservative portion of investors' portfolios. And right. so we really need to be cautious on, on what we are looking at as far as the market direction. When we talk about the market, including stocks and bonds, what these rising interest rates may mean for the markets in general. And then, you know, the, the, the housing market has ripple effects and implications throughout the economy. So as that slows down, what does that mean for the rest of the market? And also, you know, economists are paying pretty close attention to the yield curve. Basically, I should be able to get a higher rate if I loan money out for a longer period of time uh, than I would get for a shorter period of time. But when that yield curve inverts, meaning that I am actually earning higher rates of return off short-term money, uh, economists have said that this often is kind of a, a signal, a warning flag, if you will, that there could be some coming economic headwinds. In fact, it's it's been a leading indicator of some recess recessionary periods in the past. Right. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. I think there was only one exception when it didn't when it wasn't ahead of a recession. This yep. is a lot to unpack, Peter. There's so much to consider. If somebody would like to talk to you more about either prioritizing paying down their debt or where they should be investing now in this you know, very volatile climate, what's the best way to reach you? Well, they can call the office, 919-305-886. You can go online, rashanplanning.com. It looks like richonplanning.com, but it's my last name, Rashan, Peter Rashan, Rashan Planning. Uh, you can also email me, peter at rashanplanning.com. All the ways. Peter, thank you so much. Hey, a pleasure, Aaron. Thank you.